Okay, now let me uh, turn now to charting the markets. I wanna talk about a few charts and then we'll conclude today's session. Let's begin with the uh, S&P 500. We see here the S&P 500 slip below the 5,000 psychological level, very psychological. Anytime you have a big round number like that, uh, we lost it and then we immediately retook it. So this morning, the S&P 500 sitting nearly 5,100 now. We're up about 1% on the S&P. So the rally is accelerating this morning, indicating that we may have seen the pullback and now we're getting the nice rebound. Uh, there is going to be resistance on the S&P at 5120. That's coinciding with that flat 50-day moving average. If we close above the 50-day moving average today, that'll be quite a feat. Um, and it will indicate that this market really wants to resume higher. 47 to 4,800 support on the S&P if we continue to fall, which there's, you know, again, we could certainly see some more downside. Um, but this pullback was definitely needed. We had had a very nice round or weeks and weeks and weeks of uptrends uh, and, and weekly gains. Uh, it's time to see a little bit of that air come out of the tire. And it was completely normal with, uh, you know, the geopolitical concerns, the CPI print, the readjustment of the expectations of interest rates, some of the jawboning by the Federal Reserve. By the way, the Federal Reserve uh, governors have been out in full force for the last two weeks just talking, talking, talking. So a lot of this has been the Fed kind of tempering expectations, and the market has come down in response. Uh, the NASDAQ 100 also pulling back. As I mentioned to you, I was able to take advantage of that pullback and add some more on Friday. We are rebounding now. Uh, the NASDAQ up this morning about 1.4%. Uh, it's actually the only, the only major index out doing it. <clears throat> this morning would be uh, here in the U.S. is the Russell 2000. If you look at the Euro stocks 50, the idea we put on FEZ, that one's up already 1.6%. So it's outperforming uh, the NASDAQ. It's outperforming the S&P. It's in line with the Russell 2000 this morning. But the NASDAQ also rebounding uh, from that recent breakdown from its 50-day uh, moving average. Again, not a big deal. We had a very nice rally. It's due for a pullback. We got some big volume there indicating we did shake out some weak hands. And we may about be ready to see some more upside here. Here's the Russell 2000, which I told you is also really doing well, up 1.6% today, rebounding off of that 190-ish, 191 low uh, that it had set. It had fallen pretty sharply. Uh, small caps are really well positioned, in our opinion, to do well. They have been, they've so underperformed large caps uh, for so long, and you tend to see those small caps really begin to outperform in a new regime of rate cuts. And as, you know, as the market begins to turn a corner, they tend to outperform. So we do expect outperformance by small caps this year, even though they've struggled a little bit so far uh, this year. Volatility back in the complacency zone this morning. So that also giving us not necessarily an all clear, but an indication that we may have seen uh, the peak of this current uh, bearishness. And as we pointed out, you can see that the lows continue to be low. I mean, the highs continue to be lower, right? We've talked about this. We talked about this last week. We have this lower uh, highs, right? Lower high, and then a even a lower high here. So you can see that we got up to that 200 weekly. This was the area we had talked about. How are we going to react? The last time we touched the 200 weekly moving average was back in October. And that was the extreme area where it finally failed. I got a long wick there and it rejected it and it came down. And this was the big rally that sparked in the stock market right here, October, November, December. And then it kind of consolidated down here below. And then we got another rally right here in uh, April up to the 200 day. But we got a really long wick and it rejected that area. And now, and even as the 200 S or weekly uh, moving average is falling here, and now the, the, uh, uh, volatility is back in the 16 area. Uh, as we speak right now, it's sitting right at 16. It's down about 3% so far this morning. So volatility back on the decline. And that obviously puts an upward impetus upon equity prices because the volatility, quite frankly, is really just a big basket of options, mainly put options on the S&P. And so as the S&P goes up, well, volatility goes down. Uh, 
And that's what we're seeing here. So we're back in the complacency zone. We're at 16 at the very lower edge of it. We may go right back into the 15, 14, 13 level here, and that's just going to be good for stocks. Uh, gold pulling back, as we had mentioned also. Gold uh, running up to that 24, nearly 24.50 or so. Uh, and then that was, of course, a record high. Uh, but then we pulled back from that level. You can't quite tell from this particular chart, but if we look at uh, the, the next chart, you can really see here, especially in this thumbnail sketch, the, we have this long wick on gold. Uh, we've talked about these before. Look at that long wick right there. Long wick, rejection, fall. Long wick on the upside, rejection, fall. Long wicks right there, set up and fall. Long wick right there and fall. Well, then you got a long wick right here, big one, right? And so uh, you can see that it's coming back down a little bit after that long wick, not a surprise. Uh, that tends to mean that, hey, we're rejecting these higher prices. That's what that long wick means on the chart uh, and on the, on the candle. Well, we did push up to that level and now we're pulling back. So that's, that's kind of uh, right in line with what we would expect. Uh, gold this morning uh, trading down about 23.33, down about 0.5% uh, on the day. A pretty, you know, pretty piddly move today. But yesterday we did have a pretty sharp uh, you know, move in gold. Uh, gold miners, for those of you trading gold miners, that 3250 level on GDX is the key area uh, that we're watching. And sure enough, we've reclaimed that area today. Uh, that's an area that many people are watching who are trading GDX. GDX. Um, silver also, as you can see here on this chart, we came right up to the $29 level. We rejected 30. There's the long wick right there that we often talk about. There's a long wick right there, rejection and fall, right? Uh, long wick, rejection and fall. Uh, somewhat of a long wick, rejection and fall. Uh, long wick there and then a fall, right? So you'll see those. You'll see them set up. You'll see them set up right there. Well, you got a really long wick right here, right? And so then we kind of got the inevitable fall afterwards. Great support at the 30 SMA, which is currently about 2640. Uh, that could definitely hold 2650. Somewhere in there could be a great area for support here for silver. Silver uh, currently trading this morning at about 27.25, so right about where it is right now on this chart. But you can see that it came right up to that area. We had drawn $29, and that seems to be a pretty tough area for silver. We are holding that $26, $27 support area. Again, $26.50, $26.40, somewhere in there is where we would expect silver to hold. The dollar also doing something that we had uh, thought it might do, and that is it came right up to the 106 to 108 resistance area. We've been talking about this ad nauseum for, uh, for oh, quite a long time. Uh, and sure enough, it came right up to that area, and now it's rejecting it. You can see a pretty big, or you see a long wick there, and then now it's starting to come back down a little bit. Um, 105.60 this morning is where we're at. So again, the dollar now, because it's risen so strong over the last several, uh, you know, after the last, you know, week, a couple of weeks or so, uh, it has a lot of room now to pull back down. Uh, and as it does, that's going to be good news for asset you know, prices here in the United States as well. So everything's kind of setting up now for another rally, as you can see. Everything's kind of, you know, the VIX is coming back down. Uh, the dollar is topping and beginning to come back down. Uh, markets are kind of bottoming and starting to come back up. So again, doesn't necessarily mean that everything is all you know all clear, but we're kind of getting an all clear signal here from some of these charts. Uh, lastly, uh, just to wanted to keep your uh, your attention on this. The natural gas continues to skid right along this line we had talked about before in the past. Uh, this is an area where we've rebounded back in 2016. We rebounded in 2020, and now we've touched it again. Well, this has happened, and it seems to happen, what, every four years, huh? Almost like the Bitcoin halving, so to speak, right? Well, anyway, you can see we're skidding right along that support line, about $1.50 all the way up to about $1.75 or so, right in there, kind of like we saw back here. And these often don't last long. Uh, and what I mean by that is in terms of months, they might last a few months, but then you tend to get a rally. So as we get into the hotter months of summer, uh, this this. Uh, price of natural gas could begin to rebound. So maybe just worth keeping an eye on, uh, considering how this is a pretty historical pattern here that kind of plays out on natural gas.